Texas Congressman Pat Fallon joining me now. Congressman, are Republicans in full support of Israel, as Netanyahu says, to take Hamas apart? Full support from you guys? I believe so, Stuart. I don't know of any Republican in the House or Senate that is not in, as you said, full support of Israel. They're our closest ally in the Middle East and one of our greatest allies in the world. And we need to do everything we can to support them and uh, help guarantee their security. And if Hezbollah attacks Israel on the northern frontier there, if they attack, would we go in and support Israel with our own military? I think we'll definitely give, you know, ben, Prime Minister Netanyahu hasn't asked for that, and that would be a dramatic step because that's never happened before, but we certainly would give them the material that they need and uh, in, it's in their support. But we, I, I do like the fact that Lindsey Graham, Senator Graham, uh, you know, warned Iran because that's what we call a deterrent. That's something that Joe Biden hasn't really learned the value of in the last two and a half years. Uh, Border Patrol says four Iranians have been apprehended in Eagle Pass, Texas since the beginning of October. They're calling them special interest aliens. Uh, bigger numbers than that. 30 Iranians, 60 Syrians, 50, 35 Pakistanis, 100 Russians, nearly 2,000 Chinese nationals, all apprehended at the southern border since October the 1st. Congressman, that is making a lot of people really nervous. You know what, Stuart? It makes me nervous. It scares the bedickens out of me, and it should scare most Americans. The fact that we've apprehended over 6,000 people from Afghanistan last year, over 600 from Iran, over 500 from Syria, and then thousands from Russia and China. Most of these countries, these countries don't have the United States' best interest at heart. And even, Stuart, if just 1% of the figures that I just shared with you are sleeper agents or terrorists, that is horrifying for this country. That's why we have to secure the border forthwith. But how are you going <laughs> to... We have to secure the border forthwith. I mean, I just don't see it happening, mm -hmm. Congressman. I mean, how would it happen? What are you going to do? You can't build a wall in a couple of weeks. Well, we, it, it would have been nice to have a president of the United States that had the will to secure the border, which Joe Biden has it. And at least if the American people demand it, and he understands that he's going to be hammered in the polls come next November, he might actually begin to realize the value of, oh, I don't know, things like the wait Mexico policy that President Trump had initiated, the uh, border walls and whatever they want to call them, impediments or barriers, they're walls. You need to build them. And you're right, you can't build them overnight, but we need to begin. We need to start because uh, this is frightening. And God forbid what Israel's going through now, I do not want, in the, in, my, in the worst of days, for America to ever have to go through this. Indeed. Congressman, Jim Jordan is aiming for a speaker vote tomorrow at noon, we believe. He currently doesn't have the votes. What are you going to do with Matt Gates and the seven holdouts? Because they are dictating policy for your whole conference. Well, that, that, you know what, that happened in January, Stuart. And the whole thing with the conference, or if, you know, most people know it as the caucus, what you do is you have a process to elect a leader, or in this case, a speaker, because you want to cut out the other parties so they have no say in it. The Democrats do it to us, and of course, we try to do it to them. And you see that done in state capitals across the country, and you see you saw the Republican conference do it for almost 200 years, well, it, it, since the inception of our party in the 1840s. So, but it, uh, what did Kevin McCarthy got? 188 votes, I think. To 31, and he had a problem on the floor. And then Steve Scalise won. He was our nominee. He won. It was a closer vote, 113 to 99. But there were people that aren't honoring the rules and the spirit of the caucus. So I don't know why you have a conference if we can't uh, move forward. Now Jim Jordan is our nominee. And uh, I, so we're going to see. I hope he doesn't go to the floor unless we have the votes, though. You know, it's very likely that the Democrats will come in to help select a speaker, and they will elect, they will impose a severe penalty on Republicans for doing that. It's likely, isn't it? I don't know if it's likely, but it's possible, Stuart. Mm -hmm. And I want to, you know, have a conference uh, process where that's not likely, where, in fact, it's not only likely, it's not possible because we are united. That's why you have those internal votes, you have those internal fights within the family, in your own home, and then whoever gets the most votes, you should all go out on the floor and support. That's the way the process works. But unfortunately, it's broken, and we absolutely need to fix it. Indeed. Congressman Pat Fallon, Republican, Texas, thanks for joining us, sir. Always appreciated. Thanks very much. Yes, sir. Thanks, Stuart. God bless.